What's going on everybody? My name is Dan and today we're going to be looking at the trio consisting of Cease, Elevate, and Riversan. The 100 Thieves members Cease and Elevate have been dueling together for almost a year now, going way back to the Fall Skirmish Finals at TwitchCon 2018. They've stuck together since then, with their most notable achievements being first place at WSOE3, first in one of the World Cup Qualifier Weeks, and then an amazing third place in the World Cup Finals. Once trios became a thing, the duo decided to join forces with Team Liquid's Riverson. The NA West player is a dominant force in his own right, and was able to place high up at the World Cup Solo Finals 9th place finish. All three of them together so far have been able to consistently place high in recent trio events, with their best results being 6th place in the 2nd Cash Cup. These guys have over a staggering $2.3 million in combined earnings so far, and with the Fortnite Championship Series, or FNCS, underway, they're looking to up that number by a lot. Cease and Elevate normally play on NA East servers, and Riversan normally plays on West, so there comes the issue of which region they choose to play on. We'll be looking at how they're dealing with that, along with what other changes they've made to their playstyle in the past couple of weeks. Then we'll look at how they play together, and what exactly makes them such great trio partners. But before we get started, Pro Guides has a small announcement to make. We are adding a ton of new features to our site, exclusive guide analysis videos for our pro members, and also ProPass now grants access to all games. We also have more free coaching passes and points for InstaPro if you're a pro member, so head on over to Pro Guides by clicking the link in the description below. First, let's talk about our trio's landing and rotation strategies. In week one of the championship series, they were mostly landing at Happy Hamlet and the surrounding snow area. They usually split up so that they could each cover more ground and get more loot. That's usually the norm in trios and squads. In terms of loot, Happy Hamlet is a pretty good spot. It has a ton of chests and floor loot, but its remote location makes rotating out very difficult sometimes. They would get into a lot of storm fights because of it, ending up in awkward positions that were a little bit tough to get out of. Their week one results weren't horrible or anything, finishing 43rd on NA East, but for how talented this trio is, they weren't happy with their position on the leaderboard. They needed a new landing spot. So after that week, they changed their drop location to the factories near Dusty Depot. There's some solid loot here, around six chests inside, three on the Meteor, and a few more scattered nearby that they can get. The location is also centralized, being right in the center of the map, so the rotations are a breeze. But why give up the loot at Happy Hamlet? There were over 30 chests in their previous drop spot. Well, turns out there's another way for them to get plenty of loot. The big reason to land at the factories is you can then rotate to Retail Row. Ever since they added the zombies to retail this season, it's become one of the best loot locations in the game. Destroying one of these horde obelisks drops a bunch of utilities such as heal items, launch pads, and campfires. Each zombie can also drop weapons when they die, making it easy to farm up important legendaries like RPGs, grenade launchers, and heavy snipers. Just look at the loot Mongrel, Benji, and Mitro were able to get farming at retail. It's nuts! While some teams may choose to land directly at retail, our trio here decides to loot outside first, then rotate in. One problem with farming the zombie horde in retail is that you're out in the open focusing on zombies. It's loud and a lot is going on with all the zombies near you, making it hard to watch out for invaders. That makes flanking players at retail row one of the more opportune ways to start a fight. If the flank is successful, they can then scoop up all the good loot that's been farmed for them. To do well in these tournaments, our trio is at some point going to have to play aggressive and go for kills. So going for them at retail row while players are busy killing zombies is a way that they can shift the mid-game fights they take in their favor. If there happens to be nobody in retail, then they get to farming all the loot for themselves. They didn't do this every single game, as sometimes the zone wasn't in retail. They then chose to rotate early so they could get into a good position. But most of the time, the zone is pretty close by, so they could head to retail. Here's an example of one of those fights. Wait, wait, wait. On the elite agent, I stopped them maybe. Yeah, five, ten. Okay, I'm pushing up. Pushing up. Just hold yeah. tight no matter what. Yeah. I see, so we can just be. I got 30, 30 white guys on the kid. I'm being the. Okay. I'm not okay, going for shotgun. Beam. Yo, behind us is looking for third party. East, east. Watch your back, east. He's right here. On my left. Dead, 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 dead. Box up, box up, box up. I need his loot. Please finish him. Got his loot. Give me a 2v2. Any shoddy? Box up my loot to your right. To the right, elevate. Oh my god. Rough. Instead of attacking from the residential side they came in, Cease and Riverson decide to take the flank route towards the blacktops to get a better angle on their opponents. Listen to how they communicate with each other before shooting. I'm gonna beam. Here, here. Oh, I'm gonna get an easy beam, easy beam. Yeah, I'm here, River. If you could wait. 
Okay, wait. Uh, uh, yeah. You Ready? always want to be coordinating your shots with your teammates if your opponent doesn't know you're there. That way, you can get the maximum number of bullets in before they start building cover. Anyways, the rest of the fight plays out pretty simply. Being the aggressors allowed our trio to control the fight. Their opponents stay pressured by the zombies on the ground level, so all our trio needs to do is hold height and look for opportunities to beam their enemies. While Riverside and C stick together, notice how Elevate is playing by himself. Sticking together certainly has its advantages, but by positioning one teammate to apply pressure from an opposing angle, their enemies are going to have twice as hard of a time protecting themselves. Most players won't have every angle covered, so it's important for them to split up when they can to find those openings. After a minute or so of fighting, River drops off the high ground and gets knocked out. Fortunately, our remaining duo was able to trade the Elim and get River San's reboot card. The fight didn't go exactly how they wanted, as ideally you would get a pick immediately and have the numbers advantage in the fight, but they were still able to get three eliminations and go on to later reboot River San, making the flank move a success. Alright, let's take a look at one of the games they won and see how they play the end game. They were able to farm retail and end up with a crazy amount of loot, including a gold RPG, multiple launch pads, and shockwave grenades. All they need to do is get a good position with each new circle and focus on players rotating in. The earlier they rotate, the easier it'll be to get set up, so they tend to prioritize their rotations over going for kills. The idea is that with proper positioning, kills will be presented to you. Instead of staying outside in the safe zone and over committing for eliminations, they make the call to rotate early. Here, take a look at this shockwave grenade setup they use. They place a cone to layer underneath them, then put a floor piece above it. Then, they edit three corners of the floor piece and the same three corners of the cone. They all line up on the little railing, and River tosses the shockwave near the top of the raised cone. This allows them to perfectly launch together with a single shockwave grenade, saving their resources in the process. Our trio makes a decision not to contest the players above them. Again, they want to be looking for easy picks on players rotating in. Going for a build battle when height has little value right now is just not worth it. And the team above them isn't really a threat since they'll also be focusing on rotators. Once the zones get smaller, controlling height becomes much more valuable. One thing to point out is how our trio communicates. They don't seem to have an in-game leader, but rather all three of them contribute to making calls. Elevate and Riverson tend to call their plays the most, like when, where, and how they're going to rotate. For not having an IGL, they respond extremely well to each other's calls. Short and efficient comms are a huge part of this. Callouts like resetting or I'm pathing in can convey a huge amount of info about what to do without cluttering the comms. Since they landed at retail and were able to easily get an RPG, they now have a huge advantage in this endgame. They use the RPG to knock down all the players off of height and end up taking it themselves. High ground with an RPG is one of the most powerful positions to ever be in. You can rain down rockets that the players below can't easily block. With all them controlling height, efficient callouts have to be made to pick up the rest of the kills here. Markers are being placed non-stop to help them focus on the same targets together. Their split positioning is just so dominant at this point. Cease controls the ultimate high ground, and Elevate and Riverson are applying pressure from down below. With no way for their opponents to retake height, they easily wipe the rest of the lobby and grab the win. So our trio has a bit of an issue regarding their locations. Cease lives central, Elevate lives east, and Riverson lives on the west coast. Before week 2 of the FNCS, they had been playing on NA East servers since it benefits both Cease and Elevate with lower ping. For week 2, they decided to play on NA West. This allowed River to get a chance at playing with lower ping, but with the side effect of Cease and Elevates going up. The decision turned out to be a pretty good one, as they managed to finish 10th place in NA West's Week 2 Finals. In comparison, they finished 43rd the prior week on East, so there was definitely some improvement there. But the question going forward is what they'll do about their location issue. Having played for a few months already, they've stuck together longer than most pro trios out there have. It'd be a shame to see such a solid addition Riverson have to part ways from this roster simply because of where he lives. But who knows, maybe they'll stick through the ping problems and stay together. Moving might be a tough choice for these guys, as they're all still pretty young, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. With support from their orgs, both of which are massive and have resources, moving Riverson closer to NAE servers for the duration of the FNCS might just be the right move. We all know how important ping is in this game, and having one player handicapped in their lineup will definitely impact their results. And with how we saw these guys play at the World Cup, there's no denying the level of individual skill each of them possesses. It's always interesting to see how a trio with a lot of experience together works. Too many players out there underestimate how long it can take to fully develop an understanding of how your teammates play. All the rosters out there that are constantly swapping players are always taking risks when it comes to the teamwork aspect. But not this trio. That's an area that they excel in. The only problem with the roster here is their locations. Poor ping can have such an impact on how you play that it can really mess with the end results. Hopefully this trio can work something out regarding their ping and server location. 
Going into the future, they have the potential to be one of the top trio teams in North America, and it would be a shame to see location be the thing that breaks them up. Alright, thanks so much for watching guys, make sure to leave a comment telling us who you want to see next, and we'll see what we can do. And if you want to check out each of those players, we'll leave links to their channels in the description. They all stream regularly, so be sure to drop a follow so you can watch them later. And if you guys like this video, make sure that you like it and share it with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel because we have new videos just like this one popping up every single day. Alright guys, good luck with your Fortnite grind, and I will see you in the next one.